All right, in this video, we are going to talk about angles. And we're going to classify some stuff and just kind of talk about what it takes to be an angle. So uh, in general, we have an angle is made by two rays, so plural, um, two rays with the same end. So there's a ray, there's a ray. And what they make is a gap between them. That gap between them is your angle. So uh, a couple different ways to name an angle. Um, we can name an angle with a letter. So angle X. And so that symbol is what we're going to use to always name it. So if it was angle X, then that would be only be one option. It would be that angle right there. This is not always a possibility. Sometimes lines are crossing and angle X is not specific enough. So you may have to angle name something with three letters. So angle um, Y, X, Z is a way to do it. Y, X, Z, or um, angle Z, X, Y is the other way to do it. And it's the exact same angle, um, but notice how X is in the middle. That's called the vertex. And those are kind of the beginning or end. It depends on the direction you go, but they do represent the exact same angle. And one other way is if you do have a number, you can just say it's angle one, and that's the only angle it can be. All right. So when we draw angles, it depends on the direction we go. So when we initially draw a, an angle, um, we are going to, this is kind of a, a trig connection, is when we draw an angle, we like to kind of start the angle on the positive x-axis, and then we rotate it around. So we rotate it around in that direction because that's actually where the quadrants get their numbers. So when we draw a positive angle, we start on this positive x-axis and we go in this direction. That direction represents a positive angle. So when we're heading in that direction, we're actually, that's why the quadrants got the numbers that they did, one, two, three, four. Uh, if we go the other direction, counterclockwise, we are heading in a negative direction. Okay, so uh, example, if you're talking about a 30 degree angle versus a negative 30 degree angle, all it is is the direction that you're going. So your positive 30 is here versus negative 30 is there. But they're really the same thing, um, same kind of gap between the x axis, it's just a direction which definitely puts you in a different quadrant, right, depending upon your situation. Um, your angle can be measured in, there's two different ways, degrees, which on your calculator, you may see it abbreviated as DEG, um, or radians, which is typically a newer way for most people to describe an angle. And it might be abbreviated as RAD. All right, so we have a couple classifications for some angles. We have a right angle is going to represent a 90 degree angle. And just make sure you put a little box on there to represent that it's 90, no matter how um, not 90 it looks. You put a box on it. That meant that it was supposed to be 90. The straight angle, which really doesn't get talked about too often, um, it's just an angle that creates 180 degrees. An acute angle is a smaller angle, so something that is less than 90 degrees would be an acute angle, and something greater than 90 degrees is an obtuse angle. So something maybe like that. Okay, so those are just some names that kind of get thrown out periodically from time to time as you're talking about names. Uh, a couple of little pieces to this is. Um, we're going to classify the angles according to size. So just a couple examples of what are obtuse, what are acute, all that. So uh, one and three are smaller angles. By smaller, I mean less than 90. So angles one and angle three are acute. And then two and four look like they're bigger than 90. So those are obtuse. All right, and then in this picture, because of the boxes, that means that all of those are 90 degrees. Another thing that tells you that there should be 90 degrees is this symbol right here. That symbol represents perpendicular. 
So you got angles um, five, angle six, angle seven, and angle eight are right angles. And then for number nine, it makes a straight line. So angle nine is a straight angle. Okay, so uh, two other little pieces of information, uh, two other things that we categorize angles with are when you put angles together, um, they are known as complementary if these two angles add up to 90 degrees. So two angles add to 90. Okay, so let's say what I like to generalize this is, if this is angle A and this is angle B, angle A plus angle B makes 90. Okay, that's really the key, because what you get out of this idea of a complementary is an equation. Because if they say they're complementary, when they tell you one angle, they don't tell you the other, you can figure out the other by setting up an equation. So supplementary, same thing, but you're now looking at if this is angle A and this is angle B, you're looking at angle A plus angle B adding up to 180 degrees. So that's the idea of supplementary. Supplementary is they make 180 and complementary is they make 90. So for example, they say they want you to find the complement and the supplement of that angle. Then uh, if we're doing complement, We are doing some angle plus 57 uh, is a complement, so that means it's going to make 90. So if we subtract 57, your angle would be 33 degrees. So that would be its complement. And if you're doing supplement, supplement means the two angles should make 180. So you're looking at some angle plus 57 equals 180. Subtract your 57. Seven, and your angle then is 123 degrees. Okay. And one last little bit is the word congruent. The word congruent means that the two angles, when they say the two angles are congruent, that means um, that the angles are equal. And by equal, I mean if they're one's 45, then the other one's going to be 45. So the symbol for congruent is an equal sign with a little tilde on it. So that represents congruent. So you can describe this as angle BAC would be congruent to angle FE. D, or you would say the measure of angle B, A, C would equal the measure of angle F, E, D. Okay, and that was classifying and categorizing angles.